The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, from whom every good prayer comes, give us the spirit to praise you and thank you and call upon your name, that our hearts may be warmed within us and our minds enlightened. Grant that we may worship you now in beauty, truth, and love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be you, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's second epistle to the Corinthians. As you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you, who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and the need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 130 responsively by half verse. Out of the depths I have called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, For there is forgiveness with you. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. O oh Israel, wait for the Lord. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall be all
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, Little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. As most of you know by now, and if you don't, I hope you like surprises. I'm your new associate rector. My name is Hilary Strever, and I am delighted to be here. Today is the first day since Pentecost.
that I have stood in a pulpit, and it feels really good. My husband David and I moved to Richmond in early June from the far, far southwest corner of the state. You know, when you get out there far west, there's more to the state. You just keep going, and then there's more, and you keep going, and that's where we came from. We really look forward to getting to know all of you and working with you to serve God and our neighbors in the coming days and months and years. Last week, being new, it was a time for me to learn new names, new places. It was a time for me to get lost here on this huge campus you have. It was a time for me to learn how to use the microphones. Seriously, I preached the eight o'clock service with no microphone at all. And it was a time, most importantly, for me to begin absorbing who you are and what you do. For doers, you are. Doers is your identity. When I first started looking into you and who you are, my first encounter with you was simply your website address. No St. James Episcopal.org. No St. James Richmond. The Diocese.org. For you guys, no. You people want others to know, even as they Google you up, who you are as doers. Yet, as I came here into this beautiful sanctuary, I was struck by the presence of not one, but two. Verbs: to be, to do. Above the altar, here, be doers. And again, over here on your beautiful banner, be doers. And then there at the bottom, the holy name of God, Yahweh, interpreted, "I will be what I will be." I am who I am," God said to Moses on that mountain. Being, existence itself, and Jesus, as God incarnate, picks up that verb to be in the Gospel of John. He says, "I am the light. I am the way. I am the truth." I am living water. I am bread from heaven. I am the good shepherd. I am. I am echoing that divine name, Yahweh, being. So we come to one reason why God, the Son, the capital W Word of God, ever became incarnate as Jesus of Nazareth in the first place. Or as Paul puts it this morning in his epistle, why God Himself, Christ, though He was rich, became poor for us, because it wasn't enough for God to reveal Himself in the beauty of creation or in the spoken and written words of Scripture. It wasn't enough for God to reveal who God is by speaking through the prophets. No, we needed. A God we could touch, a God we could come face to face with. We needed God, the capital W word, who gave us the lowercase w word to fulfill that word, to embody it, to show us in the best way that we can possibly relate to, by becoming one of us. By showing us in His own spoken words and actions, who God is. So Christ shows us who God is, and Christ shows us what it means for us to be. From Christ's being, from His identity as God, comes His doing, creating, healing, feeding, giving, loving, listening, redeeming, living, dying, resurrecting, saving. Christ doesn't 
do all these verbs because he's a nice guy. Christ does these things because he is God. And that is who God is. So Christ's actions reveal God's being. But God doesn't stop there. There's another reason. As God says through the prophet Isaiah, as my word goes forth from my mouth, so shall it not return to me empty. Or as Jesus says in the gospel according to John, all those the Father gives me will come to me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those he has given me. In other words, God created us and God redeemed us so that in the power of the Holy Spirit we may be with God and not just as individuals but called together in unity as a holy community in God brought back into holy relationship with the Trinity the one who was and is and is to be the one who is life itself the one who is the ground of our being who makes us truly alive for that is what eternal life and salvation are being with God this is illustrated in our gospel lesson this morning when Jesus speaks it is not from afar but it was close up with both Jairus and with the woman who hemorrhaged and when Jesus speaks with Jairus in particular the father of this little girl who is dying Jesus tells him do not be afraid but believe believe we often think of the word belief as meaning merely an intellectual assent like yes I believe the plumber is coming over at two o'clock today but Christian belief goes deeper than that the English word belief comes from the German word Liebe as in ich liebe dich love so when Jesus says believe he is inviting Jairus and us not just to assent intellectually to him but to join him in loving relationship the one who loved us before we were even a twinkle in our parents eyes the one who loved us so much that he became incarnate and hung on a cross and defeated death and gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit that we might be one with him that one is asking us to love him believer beloved to be the beloved's beloved for we become like that which we believe beloved believe worship loving God is not merely an emotion but it is an action in and of itself and in loving God we affirm that we want to become like Christ and loving God means loving our neighbors for Jesus said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets this is why we follow Christ so that being loved by God and loving God in return we may love each other too they are mutual they go hand in hand and this love manifests itself when we participate with God in doing the things Jesus did bearing the divine love and light and life into 
that God so generously gives us into a world that is hungry and thirsty for that heavenly bread and living water. God pouring God's self and life and love into us changes us and changes the world through us. Christ is the one in whom we live and move and have our being, Paul says. So to have the identity of Christian means all this. People who are because God is. Second Peter says, once you were no people, but now you belong to each other and to God. As God's divine actions flowed out of who God is, from our being in Christ flows our doing in Christ, doing works that take on a holy and spiritual dimension. And in that divine relationship between being and doing, God transforms us and the whole world. Some might say that God is transforming the Episcopal Church even now this very morning as General Convention yesterday elected Michael Curry to the office of presiding bishop in a landslide election, the first person of color to serve as presiding bishop in our denomination. Three mission trips will be commissioned this morning who out there is going? Raise your hand. Quite a few of you. Missioners, you are not merely going to do. For God, I am who I am, sends you. You are doers that bear Christ, Christ's love and loving kindness and mercy and humility with you. You are going to do good things because Christ loves you and the whole world and so did good things. And by allowing Christ to do good things in, in you and through you, by seeking Christ in those whom you encounter, I pray that you and they will be blessed and changed. Now, all of you, I ask you to join me in a prayer, closing your eyes as I pray the words from Psalm 46. Please join me in prayer. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Amen. Let us stand and recall the ancient teachings of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us kneel together in prayer and open our hearts to God. Gracious God, we pray today for the church, for the men and women of faith throughout the world who strive to serve you in word and deed. We pray for Metropolitan Richmond, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and these United States. By your Holy Spirit, guide our leaders and all government agencies to serve your people. We pray for our world and for refugees everywhere. We pray for our partners in mission locally and around the world. We pray for the oppressed and all who struggle for freedom and justice. We pray for peace among the nations and for an end to war. We pray for our enemies and for all who would do us harm. We pray for the men and women of our armed forces who serve in places of conflict. Keep them safe and grant them courage to serve with honor. We pray for the poor and the suffering, for the lost and the unloved, for those in prison and for those who live without hope. We pray for our families and friends, for the sick, the elderly, and those who have died, that all who have asked for our prayers will know God's healing power. Be theirs and ours this day. We remember especially the sick and those in need. John Calvin Barnard, Lee Bowles, Whit Clement, Jenny Cohn, Billy Ford, Dave Johnson, Ashley Bloomer Colitz, Nancy Rose Lewis, Sarah McClelland, John Porter, Ruth Ann Sawyer, Cheryl Shakeshaft, Ned Southwick, Lynn Stott, Betty Whitehurst, Jennifer, and all others who we name to you, Lord, at this time, silently or aloud. We ask for your care and guidance of all those who will be participating in our upcoming mission trips. We give thanks for the newly married especially Colleen Cannon and Thomas Jenkins, and Abigail Taylor and Thomas Woodward, who were married yesterday. We give thanks for the lives and ministries of all who celebrate their birthday this week, especially Elizabeth Dudley, Preston Harrison, Frank Page, and Laura Waite, who celebrate their birthday today. We give thanks for the ministry of the Right Reverend Michael Curry, who was elected as the new presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church yesterday at General Convention in Salt Lake City. 
and in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we remember Becky Barrett, Derek Smith, Dorothy Powers, Jerry Porter, and Lynn Hohen, who died last week. Almighty God, you have taught us to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly before you. Make us doers of your word that throughout the world your name may be praised and your people served. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, St. James's. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad you're here today. And a special welcome to Hillary. Hillary Strever, we're so glad you're here with us. Yeah. That's the last time that'll happen, so, you know. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. Uh, Hillary's husband, David, could not be with us this morning. He's an author, and he's currently writing two books on cycling, and he's in Connecticut for a couple of weeks, but he'll be with us soon. Um, following the service, we will have a reception for Hillary next door in Valentine Hall. I hope you guys will come and be with us, and it also gives you an opportunity to do a little ministry while you're there. You know, the Axe House that we've had out on the porch of the Misha House that we've been filling with household items needed for those who are on the verge of homelessness, we're going to have an opportunity to do some packing and sorting of some of those items if you would like to take part. So come on over and get something good to eat and some fellowship and uh, meet Hillary and um, share in that ministry with us. That'll be right after the service. I want to say, want to continue by saying what a great vacation Bible school we had this past week. I want all those who volunteered for VBS to stand up out there. Yeah, come on, you, if, I know they may still be in bed, half of them, but you all stand up. You all did great work. Louise, there you are. The kids climbed Mount Everest over Vacation Bible School, among other things, and uh, the joy in that room was just palpable, and they learned so many good things, and we're blessed to have them. So thanks to Becky Page and all the volunteers who made VBS work so well. The young adults are sponsoring a trip to a Squirrels baseball game on July 7th. It's for the entire parish. It's just being sponsored by our young adults ministry. They'll be selling some tickets on the portico following the service. If you'd like to come and bring your families, um, it's a sales, uh, the advanced sales are a fundraiser for the Children's Center. 
So some of the proceeds will go to the children's center. So it's a twofer. You get to go to a great baseball game and go as a parish family and also support our children's center. So I hope you'll take advantage of that if you are able. Lots of other announcements in your Sunday chimes. Casey Dunaway is playing for us again this morning, and once more he is happy to give tours of the organ following the service if you have an interest in doing that. Last but not least, I'll call up Carmen to introduce the mission team so we can bless them on their way. Okay, I want to invite all of the people who are on our three mission teams departing next month to come on forward. Come on up here so we can see you. Right up here. Mission is one of the hallmarks of our parish, and we have no shortage of missioners heading out this summer next month to go be and do Christ's Word um, in, in some very special places. Um, and we want to commission them today and bless them and send them out with our love and prayers because they are our representatives. So the Honduras mission team, where's the Honduras mission team? Raise your hand. I can't say all of the names because there's too many of you this morning. This team is a mix of adults and youth, and it's led by Julie Wade this year. And they're heading to San Pedro Sula, Honduras, to spend a week with our friends at Our Little Roses Home for Girls. And we've been partnering with Our Little Roses for over two decades now. So this is a very special relationship. So thank you, Honduras team. And we also have not one, but two youth-specific teams. And I want to thank all of those youth and the adult leaders uh, who will be on those trips. And I'd like to invite Mary Beth Applin out to say just a brief word about what they'll be doing and being. Good morning, everyone. We're delighted that we have two youth trips going out. Um, our first ever mini mission, which is for uh, rising middle schoolers in 6th, uh, 7th, and 8th grade. They are headed to the eastern shore of Virginia with Harvest of Hope. It's an ecumenical organization um, that studies, worships, and uh, does service oriented around hunger issues. So uh, those youth and adults will be gleaning the fields out on the eastern shore um, in the middle of July. So keep them in your prayers in that heat. <laughs> Um, after a good day of service, they'll have a chance to visit one of the local parks on the beach before they return back from their three-day trip. And then our senior high youth are headed to Montana to the Blackfeet Nation Indian Reservation. And while we're there, it'll be um, a mix of ministry of presence and relational ministry, working with the children on the reservation, doing a kids camp and an outrageous sports camp program. And then we'll also be doing some work projects while we're there, um, doing some house projects and uh, yard maintenance kind of stuff. Um, and don't worry, while, they are, while we are out there, uh, we're also going to take a chance to explore this beautiful planet we live on and take a trip into Glacier National Park. Awesome. What a wonderful witness. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these, your servants, who give of their time and energy and resources to show your love in this broken world. Bless them as they travel to Honduras, to Montana, and to the Eastern Shore. Bless them in the work they do and in the relationships they build. May all who struggle with poverty and hunger know your healing touch. We give you thanks for these teams and their eagerness to serve and to learn from others. Watch over their families while they are away and bring them home to us safely. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon each of you this day and always. Amen. Thank you all. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with James and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
like to invite forward anyone celebrating a birthday or an anniversary who might like to receive a blessing, please come forward. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. For the measure you give will be the measure you receive. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.
in peace to love and serve the Lord.